can't believe the service of the coffee is now yet. Welcome to Fishing for Fun. This week we're out doing a little bar fishing on the Fraser and we're lucky enough to have two of the executive members of the Fraser Valley Salmon Society come along with us and do a little guiding, if you will. And Pete Sommer, the president, Chris Gadsden, the treasurer. Welcome to the show, guys. Good to be with you, Fred. It's a, a beautiful day, as usual, in the Fraser Valley. The fishing, I hope the fishing is going to pick up from what we've seen since we've been here. The tide's starting to come in. Maybe we're going to get on a little bit of a bite. You're yeah, right. usually on this lower end, uh, Fred, when the tide starts to come in, we uh, usually can pretty well count on getting into some fish, so hopefully today is uh, no exception to that rule. That's, I can't see any reason why it shouldn't be, Chris. By gum, we're going to come with the best guides available, so it, it'll happen. Pete, maybe this is a good time for you to maybe give us a little bit of a, a briefing on the Fraser Valley Salmon Society. What's it all about? What is it? Well, you know, the Fraser Valley Salmon Society really is uh, an organization uh, that represents sports anglers uh, on the Fraser River, uh, predominantly Chinook focused. Uh, um, our sort of major area of influence is uh, from the outskirts of Vancouver all the way up to Hope. Uh, um, it's been around for uh, 10 years, and uh, I can say quite honestly that uh, the first uh, three years were. Uh, were chaotic uh, at best. Uh, there was a lot of uh, heavy uh, uh, lobbying and even a bit of uh, a number of pressure tactics employed uh, till um, uh, people started to pay attention uh, to our cause and in fact we were shouldering uh, all of the uh, uh, responsibility for conservation or a very large responsibility for conservation and we weren't uh, reaping any of the benefits and I guess what I'm saying is that uh, we went uh, from uh, two fish a day in 1980 to a uh, total retention ban uh, that particular year and that lasted for four years and uh, that, that, that created a lot of problems. Uh, so really it is uh, an organization uh, that repre represents sports anglers on the Fraser River. Okay, I understand that the, the, the Salmon Society, or the Fraser Valley Salmon Society, is, is invited into the Salmon Commission meetings and DFO are, are starting to recognize and, and the fact that they'll they'll phone you and you know, we, we do have input through the Salmon Society as anglers. Is that uh, I, th I think that's true and I, I think that's an important point that you've raised, Fred, uh, that in fact uh, representation is what it's all about. Uh, uh, DFO is, uh, has uh, or is using a consultative process uh, and if you're not there at the table to represent the interests of your constituencies or your anglers in your particular area, uh, there's a good chance that you're going to be overlooked, not because somebody's doing it deliberately, but because there isn't representation. So just to give you some idea of, of the kind of representation that we enjoy through various executive members uh, as we sit on, uh, on uh, the Fraser River Advisory uh, Panel. Uh, we sit on the South Coast uh, Committee of the Sports Fish Advisory Board of British Columbia, and, and I happen to be fortunate enough uh, to sit as a uh, director on the Sports Fish Advisory Board of British Columbia. So, um, you know, that, that's some pretty good representation. And, you know, when uh, somebody in DFO picks up the phone and consults you as a representative of some 10,000 sports anglers on the Fraser, uh, you know you're getting results. And, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I guess what I'm really talking about here, I feel good about the representation and the work we're doing on behalf of the sports fishing community on the lower Fraser. Yeah, from, like, I've, I've been around a relative short time, you know, like, according, like, as far as water, you guys have been around in, and, and 
and I notice some things that I think that the Sam Society are doing very well. You know, like I say, just, just we are a voice. We, we, we now we have somebody that can sit in there, and, and uh, if you don't make any noise, unfortunately, you just just don't get any grease, do you? It's, it's that simple. You're, you're, the, 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 the commercial guys are very well represented. The natives seem to be very well represented, and, and uh, if we were to sit by the board, then we wouldn't have anything, would we? Well, it's certainly, you know, it's really difficult. I think the, the sort of, uh, the sports angler in himself, his personality is one of, of an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, one that, you know, uh, we do our own thing, each one of us on the river, sure, uh, we end up on a bar, uh, uh, sometimes shoulder to shoulder. But by and large, we're individuals. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, we aren't tied together by some uh, common bond of, uh, of occupation. Uh, we aren't represented uh, by a labor organization that represents our interests. So we tend to be individuals, and, and that's why, if we're going to be heard effectively, uh, we have to have uh, organizations like the Fraser Valley Salmon Society uh, who speak on our behalf. I mean, we've, uh, we've, uh, and we've had great opportunities. Uh, we've met uh, with the Minister of Fisheries and Oceans a number of years ago. Uh, we have the opportunity to converse with our MLA, uh, our MP, those are all important things. Uh, we certainly have direct access uh, to uh, the Director General uh, on the Pacific Coast DFO, uh, you know, through uh, his area managers. Uh, you know, I, I've got to really say, quite honestly, that uh, those are positive things in terms of uh, participating in conservation and utilization uh, of salmonids on the Fraser River. Mm -hmm. One thing I'd like to add too, Pete, is the economic value of this fishery to Chilliwack. I think uh, District Council, including the mayor, uh, really uh, are recognizing the economic uh, benefits to Chilliwack, the mm -hmm. sports fishery. I mean, you only have to look out here on the weekends, the number of the anglers and what they're spending, and w also the enjoyment that they're having. Like we are out here today, a beautiful day to be out here, that opportunity to, to be able to fish and uh, release a fish if you want, or, or keep one if you wish. It, uh, it just makes for a great family uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. No, that we know a little bit about the Salmon Society, you know, like, I, where can I join? Well, um, uh, any of the directors, of course, uh, Pete and myself have memberships. Uh, the tackle shops, uh, they have uh, memberships. Uh, Chilliwack Dart and Tackle, of course, uh, Fred have memberships there, and we'd sure appreciate uh, more members. We did uh, start out at one time when we first started uh, going when everybody was concerned and wanted to get the fishing open that we did have up to 700 members and unfortunately apathy sets in uh, the last couple of years we've fallen to around 300 and we'd sure like to get that up well as many as we uh, could represent the more we represent uh, the better uh, impact we have when we're dealing with the powers to be cost how much does it cost to join your uh, for uh, regular membership it's only five dollars for a year mm -hmm. and for seniors and juniors it's three dollars a year and that includes, the, uh, is it a monthly, yearly newsletter? Yeah, that's for, that's for the year, and we, uh, we get out um, uh, membership, rather, we get out uh, uh, membership drives we have at the mall. We have mall displays in our annual meeting, and uh, we have out newsletters uh, that we send out to all the members to keep them in tune with what's going on with, uh, with openings uh, and uh, events like that. Let's see what we can do about going to catch some fish, will you? Well, I thought we might get a fish here when we were doing this interview, yeah, but right, I guess we're going to have to wait a little longer, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I seriously expected the bell to go when we were sitting here. We discussed it before we sat down that Murphy's Law would prevail, but it didn't, so... Well, I'm certainly ready, Fred. Well, you're, you're ready. You're well rested now, are you, Pete? Indeed. You're right on. The tide's yeah. coming in, so yeah. those bells should ring soon. That's right.
That's what it looked like. Anyway. Huh? Well, it, who, who knows for sure? Here, I'll put the bull back up there. You're going to guard the other rods. <laughs> Looks like our. He's, uh, he's putting a fight. He might not. There he goes again. He's taking off. Oh, look at look at that down there. Yep. Look at him. Look at him. Look, he's on top of the water down there. Can't win with us. Look at him down there. I don't think a boat would be a bad idea, you know. <laughs> hey, you, you might need that boat, Peter. <laughs> yeah, get him up. Yeah. Okay. We don't really want to walk down much more. Well, you, don't go too far with the boat, Peter. Can we get him coming at all? There he's going again, eh? He's, he's still taking line? Yeah, he's still he's feeling line. Out here line down now. Keep your rod up. Keep, keep that you want, up. You, you want your fish to, up in here, right? your fish to be fish, fish to be fighting the, grip on your rod. Run. I see. I seen his tail. Tail looked yeah. like it was like this yeah. eh, when it come out of the water. It, 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 believe it though, these, these fish can, can go up to 50 bucks. Yeah. No doubt about that. <laughs> Well, I'd rather try to fight him from the shore. See, see where, you can see where it is down there, Chris. It's a long way down the river now, eh? I'd say that one's got to be 30 plus. It looked like it, 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 the, tail, the tail looked like it was like this when it came out of the water. That's a huge fish, eh? Probably one of the biggest that you've ever got into, eh, Mike? Boat, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's Double. the biggest fish you've caught before that you've had one like this on? Ten. Look like a good one. Okay. seems to be somewhere between 20 and 35 pounds. But, uh, this is a good sized fish that young Mike has got. Uh, from what I can gather, it's his first, it's his first salmon, good sized salmon. Over 15 pounds. Yeah. Over 15, I'd say close to 30. So, so we get him on the beach for Belgium. Uh, you want to keep that because you want to be fighting the fish up there. The tension is good on there. Hell yeah. <laughs> We've got Pete's up there guarding the rod. <laughs> yeah. Babysitting it. That a boy, that's the way to, that's it. Just don't, you just lean on him just a bit, like you drag his step and do it. Right? Right. So you're, like he's gonna feel one. So you can lean on him a little bit more than that. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? You're trying to fire this. He'll weaken. Hi, Bert. How you doing? Are you getting tired? A little bit in my hand. <laughs> well, some people fish a lifetime to catch a fish the size of this red. That's right. That's right. But they don't they don't have a guide like we've got today. Oh, no. Right, Chris? Well, our guide actually is uh, called in sick. Okay. Hopefully he'll join us later, but... Yeah. That's true. And you know when you... You didn't do a bad job of getting us here either, Chris. How's our tension? Our tension? You're getting tired as well. <laughs> there he goes again. Oh, there he's right there now. He decided he didn't 
like that gravel rubbing on his belly for the next one. I'm gonna turn the netting over to Gordon here. He says he can do a better job than I, so. Actually, he's the second shift. Hey, boy, you're doing well. You're doing well. Hmm? <laughs> you have a video camera here. Well, you're doing good. You're doing good. It's not everybody lands one of these. Not everybody has the opportunity to land one. Hey, boy. See that? There he goes. There he goes again. Mike figures it's time that a second shift came in here. <laughs> Should put up one heck of a fight. You got the red marks to prove it. They're, they're, they're good fishing. Yeah. Or is he just that little pool just outside of no, it? There, he there he goes again. You see, he's, he's a little upset about this whole thing. <laughs> I'd be upset too, so I'd probably be going to shore. <laughs> Spelling here. I'm, I'm second shift. Seth. Still got lots left. Oh, oh, that was another one. That was his buddy. Now he goes again. That happens too, eh? <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the other side of it. The look of disappointment. <laughs> well, we'll go up and get the rod in and see if we can get into another one. To, uh, the day's still early. Oh, so we've got lots of time. Magnet. Uh, we got lots of time. It was a big fish, eh? <laughs> okay, buddy, we'll go get another one. Time.
ever caught a fish that big before? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Wow, that's really a nice fish. That's it. She's heavy. Really? Yeah. How much does it weigh? Big. Big? It weighs big, eh? Yeah. I'll give you a good fight, Gordon. Okay. How big was it? 20 pounds, maybe. Well, let's get the rod in and see if we can get some water. Just a, a brief explanation for what we're using today is, is I'm using a, a little heavier rod. It's a Berkeley bar rod. With a, I have a, a mooching reel on it. The mooching reel will carry about 275 to 300 yards of 30-pound cast line. 
and going out to the, we've got the swivel up here, and Chris, do you want to? Yeah, right, Fred, uh, as we say, anywhere 20 to 30, 35 pound test main line, and then I usually like to go with uh, a 40 pound test in here because it's, you know, you get a bit of abrasion of this bar rig uh, working up and down, so, uh, you know, about 40 pound test uh, there, and uh, you've got some beads here to keep it uh, secure in, in, in position. And then we've got here two to three feet of leader, which I've, I like to use once again, uh, being a terminal of gear, about, about 40 pound test. About 40 pound test there and, the, and about that distance. And right here you've got the, uh, the most popular spinning glow that we use at this time of year. Uh, the clarity of the water allows us to use a four, or you could be up to a two. These are one of the, seems to work uh, quite well at this time of year. And also you've got a little bead here to keep it away from the hook with your, your bait knot on here with about a size uh, 3.0 hook. And uh, also at this time of year with a lot of jacks or coho uh, using some, some bait there. And I think Gordon's got some uh, procured bait uh, there mixed in with a little borax. That is uh, some fresh coho bait. So we just open up the bait knot like that and slip it in there. Once again, you just want to snug it up. You don't want to call it uh, get it too tight, of course, red or you know, it'll, it'll, it'll cut it off there. And uh, and then you're pretty well all set to go. And uh, one thing, I guess, just before we go, uh, depending on the speed of your water and the size of the rocks, right here you got about 12 ounce, which uh, seems to be holding quite well for you there in this area. But sometimes you may have to go up to 16, 18 ounces. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is a commonly asked question. How much weight do we use? You, you use Whatever weight is required. If, it's, if, it's, if you're fishing in fast enough water to use a 16 ounce for a 16 ounce to hold, then you use a 16 ounce lead. It, and it, it, it'll go right down. I, I've gone down as low as 8, eight ounce lead. And, and 8 ounce will hold quite well in different areas. And here, here, like Chris was saying, 12 ounce. It was fringy there a couple of times when I threw it. Yeah. I wanted to walk down the river a little bit. But, uh, generally, it, it helped quite well. And also, one thing probably the viewers noticed that we've got quite uh, tall rod holders there because you want the more line, of course, that you can keep out of the water. Uh, the less current's going to catch that and you know move your rod down. So in this uh, condition where we got an incoming tide, high water, the, the higher the rod holder bet uh, we have, the better. Gordon's got one here if you're fishing uh, where you don't have to have your rod holder just at the edge of the water. One like this uh, works quite uh, quite nicely. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's definitely too short for the for the conditions that we're fishing under today. But it, it's, it, they worked very well earlier on the spring. Right? Yeah, that's right. But uh, the, the tall ones. Uh, you know, seem, seem to do the job, as you, the viewers probably noticed, we had to run through the water a couple of times to get to the rods there, and... Uh, yeah, I, yeah did I, I, I hope they've got the, I hope they've got the scene of Gordon chasing his rod. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he's just, he just, he's just still ringing, uh, ringing his t-shirt out there, and he's covered, covered with pro cure. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, that gives a brief outline to the, to the viewers. Uh, I know all the tackle shops in town are, uh, are more than willing to help people out, uh, you know, to come in, and, uh, Know, give them, uh, give anyone that's starting bar fishing, as we were saying earlier, uh, is one of the best family uh, type uh, types of fishing that you can do. Oh, great way to spend an afternoon! Yeah, you can bring your family down, the kids can play on the beach, and, and uh, dad can get some fishing, and mom can sit and read a book while sure. fish. Uh, I know that in, in my case, my my wife is starting to do a lot more fishing now because yeah. of this bar fishing scene, yeah. and it's sure. a, just a great, great yeah. way to spend an afternoon. Yeah. Sure. And you don't need really to be have to have a boat to get out there. Of course, you can, you know, there's areas off Island 22 and uh, Gill Bay and uh, yep. up at Dagsey Rosedale Bridge. You can fish well, from the beach as well, so uh, well, it can be quite productive. Places, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just uh, we just live in, a, in an awesome area, don't we? You know, when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, gotta be very thankful. That's right. Yeah, the biggest decision we have to make is whether we're going to go bar fishing or coho fishing <laughs> and trout fishing. You know, it's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an awesome place to live.
On that, that was fresh right out of the ocean, fresh. Yep. You see the sea lights right along right along the edge here? It's just going to come right straight up in it, eh? Yeah. Just beautiful. Fish. You sure are showing us up how to fish today, Fred. Yeah. Look at that. A chrome fish. Isn't that nice? You can see where he's using the procured bait that uh, And a little spinning glow. And a little spinning glow. There you go. Well done, Gordon. Well done. See hey, what we're doing now, Gordon has got to write this this fish on the back of his license. For all you novice people that are out there, that uh, this fishery is, is controlled and you're allowed 10 fish a year. Uh, right now, it's over over 62 centimeters. So if you get, catch a fish over 62 centimeters, you have to write it down on the back of your license declaring the, the water you got it in and the date that you got it. So Gordon is just complying with that rule, that's all. Well, there you are. That's a, another show fishing on the Fraser River, fishing for fun again. I'd like to thank my guests again, Chris, Peter, Gordon, Mike. Gordon and Mike, we didn't introduce at the, at the original introduction of the show. They were probably out chasing a fish. It seems to me that they were the only ones that caught fish, didn't they? It's, uh, it's good work again, guys. You, you young fellows, maybe they're a little quicker to the rods than the rest of us. What do you think? It's, uh, yeah, well, it's pretty, it's pretty good we can bring out the camera crew and get them involved in the fishing, uh, too. You know, it's unfortunate he didn't get it in, but he uh, played it very well for one of the... Probably one of the biggest fish you ever had on, eh, Mike? Yeah. Well, I, I think we got to make sure, for the record now, Mike's fish was not 40 pounds. It was somewhere between 20 and 30. It, it will grow over the next couple of weeks, but uh, I think for the record, between 20 and 30 will do nicely. <laughs> well done. You did, you did well today. You, you landed a nice spring, and you, you, you lost. It looked big. Mike, to the point. Uh, yes, you better as a goat. There's lots of people that come out here and fish. Plenty more fish in the A number of years that haven't caught a fish like that. I haven't hooked a fish like that, eh? Right. So, you know, it's just the size. Get <laughs> 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 <laughs>